everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Darla Lucian of Darla Lucian Studios, and today we are going to be finishing up a whole bunch of these clusters we started yesterday. But before we get started, I'm going to ask you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know you want to. You'll get the notifications the next time the videos are out so you can stay on top of what's going on over here at Darla Lucian Studios. Comment, let me know what's going on. Have you made some clusters since we last saw each other? Share, let's keep this conversation and inspiration rolling. All right. So, I wanted to show you a little bit of what we did last time. So, um, what I have done is stitch these together and I've embellished a couple of these here so that you can see what the finished product looks like. Also, there's the back. So this one had a brad on it, and there's the zigzag stitching that kind of holds the whole thing together. And then, so this one was also done with a brad, so same idea, just a couple of flower petals and then with the brad. And this one I stitched all around like that. This one I stitched kind of a bit wonky, but all around, and this one was attached with a brad as well. So some of these were pretty simple. I just made a hole, pardon me, I made a hole through and then just push the brad through. Um, now this one was with a button and you can see the button has some threads through it but I actually ended up gluing this one. So I sewed on the fabrics together with a little snippets of lace and ribbon and then I glued on the flower and then I glued the button in the center. So you can kind of go a couple of different ways. So this one is a brad as well and I'm just going to bring in a few others here that we've finished. Um, so this one was glued on and then with a flat back pearl placed on there. This one is uh, stitched and glued, this is glued on and then it has a, oh no it's not glued on, this one has the brad through. This one is the glued on one with a sequin in the center and again just stitching around and then this one with the pretty has the brad through. I placed I made a few other, other clusters after I turned off the camera just to kind of continue to fill up my I need to fill up my little box. And this one turned out quite cute. I like how it almost looks like a little banner. And this one's just glued on. And then this one is a brad and it's put on like that. So those are the ones that are completed. And then we have the ones that need to be completed. So I thought you might be interested to see some of the stuff. So um, some of these require stitching and some require just gluing down. So I'm going to do the gluing down ones first. I am going to try to find a spot where I can put this. All right. Not as easy as you might think because I have so many things here right now. All right, so this one was um, a button. Oh, oh! I thought I was gonna sneeze there for a sec. Was a button that kind of popped up. It was so tall, though. <coughs> oh, pardon me. There it was. Um, and so I cut off the back. So we can't actually sew this button on. We have to glue this one. But I wanted it to be a little flatter because it was a little two dimensional and we're putting inside a journal that wasn't going to work. So I'm just going to put some tacky glue on this one. And I love this little button with the, my daughter when she was little. She was into ladybugs so much. She would collect and collect and collect ladybugs. We have lots of trees in our yard and so lots of leaves fall. And then want to wait, wait for this to stick. So then she would go through the yard and she had a little a little jar that we had poked holes in. I think it was like a fruit fruit jar or something. And it was about this big around and you know about that tall and then the lid was about that big and we put holes through it and and she would go and she would collect ladybugs and she would put stuff in there and like she would do it every day she would have ladybugs in there. And we always had her release them after a little while just so that 
they would stay alive because, of course, ladybugs are so lovely for eating aphids and we didn't want to kill them off. But, uh, yeah, she we called her the ladybug princess for a little while. She was quite into that. And every spring, uh, you know, when they're first kind of coming out, she's very into them all over again. <laughs> so we'll see if she collects them this year. You know, she's getting so mature now. She'll turn 12 this year, so we'll see. We'll see if she still wants to collect ladybugs, but that's really cute. All right, I'm gonna add that to our done pile. Let's keep going. So this one here does have like a wad of thread through, and I didn't wanna take that out because I actually thought I liked how the blue is there, and then the thread was kind of the color of the gold there. So again, we're just gonna glue this button on. I mean, it's pretty simple. Just layered. First I stamped the, the words on the cotton, 100% cotton, and then we layered it up with different strips of fabric. I stitched around here, so you can see this, maybe you can see the stitching pattern is just a rectangle. Very basic. And then just find an embellishment that kind of goes. And in this case, it's our little button, which I just kind of want to position here. There we go. Alright, so while that one's gluing, we'll get this one. I really like this this uh, teal fabric that's behind there. So this is a piece of chipboard. I'm trying to make everything look a little different. And this little strip of ribbon with the rhinestones on, I glued that little strip down because that wasn't going to go under the sewing machine. I actually tried to get it to go, but uh, it just kept shifting because, you know, as soon as the foot came against a rhinestone, instead of going up and over, it just shoved it along. So change of plan, we ended up gluing it down, which is just fine. So here I have this little crown to go on, to go with wisdom, I thought. All right, and then this one, also a little chipboard, and it's just a little, little some little flowers on there, and I thought that went with our love theme here on this one. So. I'm going to put some glue on that one too and glue that down. Then we're starting to get a little bit of a collection here, which is great. So what's nice about making these kinds of things ahead is then when you go to craft later um, to make your actual journal, then you have some things to choose from, which, you know, it may not seem like a lot. Oh, I could just make it at the time. But if you're having to stop to make it all the time, um, it does kind of slow down your creativity. And when you're mass making, like what we did where we did a whole bunch at the same time, you already have all the little things out, which is a lot of little things to pull out, you know, here and there. I mean, this this is from the lace bin, this was from the fabric stash, this was from the chipboard. And we have buttons and ribbon and, you know, more chipboard. You know, it's just that kind of stuff. Just all of it out takes a lot of space. And if you're journaling and you have papers and things out too, then that also takes up a lot of space. All right, this is the last one to glue, and then we're on to stitching. So this one also was a dimensional button that really popped up. And it had a metal back, and I actually had to use my... I'll show you. I had to use my tin snips to cut the, the stuff off the back, and then I had to pound it in with a hammer so that it wasn't... So that the sharp edges weren't sticking up. So the center isn't even where I can glue it. I've got to put glue around the edge here. Because that's the part that's sticking up. But I love it. It's a, I think it's a coat button. You who sew will know better than I. Anyway, it's got fabric in the center over top of the metal, which is kind of interesting, but you see how it picks up the colors of the blue and then the gold, I thought. It was perfect for on here. So there we go. This one might make an interesting corner corner tuck. We'll see what ends up being used for. Okay, so that's that. So next up is the buttons. This one has two very, very tiny little buttons to go on this one. And I am going to be using this little thread here, if I can find an end. Oh dear, that would be nice to find an end. Well, no, there. Huh. Apparently it's stuck. Okay, 
So I'm just going to pull a bit of thread because I don't mind having a little extra because um, I have more than one to do with this color. Because we had quite a few in the red category, but mm, only a few need to need to be stitched actually. Sorry, I'm totally mesmerized by trying to thread the needle. Okay. So, and I'm going to, just because, like, with, with buttons, you're trying to put more and more strands of thread through. So, I am just going to do two, like, a double strand here so that it makes it go twice as fast. Does that make sense? All right. So, start off by poking up through my fabric. <coughs> Pardon me. I better get wrapped right. poking up through the fabric and then I take one of the buttons and I just figure out which is the front and which is the back. I don't think these have a front and back. I think they're the same. And my needle is too big. Oh, that is so heartbreaking. I didn't even think to check. Okay. That is very small. All right. That's too bad. So then I think I will have to glue those on too. Oh, I was really hoping to put some stitching on this crazy one, but you can only do what you can do, right? All right, so this one's gonna get glue as well. That's a little nuts. I got way too much glue coming out here. Okay. I'll take some of that glue off. It's just going to squish out anyway. And I just wanted the hearts not to be exactly lined up. I want them to be kind of akimbo. Okay. There. That one's cute. But it needs to dry. Alright, so the other one I wanted to do with that color was this one. So now let's try this again. This is making a knot. All right, and we wanted this one kind of here, actually, as I recall. This is quite a bit wider needle than I'm using. This is uh, from the crafting kit, not from my regular sewing kit. But good news is. This needle works. Okay, so this one has two holes. So I'm just going to line it up the way that I want it on here. And then put my needle down so that I position the button exactly where I want it. All right. Huh. This is very hard to push through because the end seems to be grabbing. It's not smooth. It's as if it's... Uh, been roughed up with sandpaper or something. I feel it grabbing the fabric. All right, so on the back, I want to go up through that one hole again. There we go. So we want to do this a couple of times just to make sure that it's good and stuck down, all right, because we want we want our journal to have secure items. You don't have to worry about stuff coming out of them. So sometimes it helps to figure out where you put your other stitches <laughs> and then slide it in. Or you can shift the um, button until it is over top of the needle and then pull the needle through. Okay. I'm just going to do two or three more and then It's really not easy to push through. I'm going to switch needles after this. This is ridiculous. Oh, goodness. I don't know if you noticed, but on this particular one, I put a little swatch of the embroidery floss underneath. Do you see that? And uh, just I had a little scrap in my snippets 
container. And I thought, oh, okay, let's just use it up on here. I thought it kind of added an interesting texture. And this guy here, I had this pom-pom thread, but it didn't stitch down as nice. But it's kind of interesting thread, right? Like it's got this chain in between all these pom-poms, but I still don't mind how that turned out. All right, so that's enough, I think. So on the back, then, it's time to make an, a knot. And so the easiest way to do that is to just stitch a little bit of fabric in. Oi! If my needle would go through. And then grab your loop before it wants to follow. And just go through your, stitch through your loop. Before you go all the way through, make sure you grab the next loop. And pull that one down. Again, and that will be three knots there, which will make it nice and secure. Alright, so I'm just going to grab this little bit of thread off of there because uh, this stitching with this nail is not working. Alright, I'm going to grab my sewing kit. You all talk amongst yourselves for a sec here. Oh, yeah. Alright, let's see if I can switch. old little uh, sewing book. What should we take out of here? Which one? This will be the thinnest one, this bead needle, but that is not as easy to work with. This guy's pretty thin. Kind of with a taller, like a bigger head to get through there, so let's try that one. Okay. So that can go into our done pile. I'm going to throw that in my sewing kit. Who knows if I'll be able to use that. Alright, so that one's away. That one's away. Alright, let's do this next one here. So this one has two buttons and then this other little thing. It's the same uh, kind of material, whatever these buttons are made of. Some kind of plastic and in the same shade. And so I thought the three were cute on there. But I did want to stitch the needles down and I thought I'd use this fuchsia color. I thought that was fun. Alright. So I just, to thread it, I just go over the needle with a loop and pull it as tight as I can and pinch and then I come through with the head and then it just pushes the loop right through in the spot where it needs to go through. My mom taught me a few of these sewing tips. I'm sure they taught me again in home ec but this is uh, <laughs> these ones I got from my mom. Alright so I'm going to start with the star because I want the star to be in a certain place and um, so, okay, so I need a hole to be about right, right there. Okay, let's put the star on. All right, and then just kind of position him. Yep, right there. Oh, this is going through so much better. I'm so glad I switched and didn't fight through it the whole video. <laughs> Oops, let's get through the right hole here. Hopefully it's therapeutic watching me and you're not getting all stressed because of my sad hand sewing here. <laughs> Honestly, the last time I hand sewed was like a month ago, maybe a little bit longer. I did some hand sewing, slow stitching in my uh, Christmas journal stuff, so. And that had been a while before that. Of course, sewing on buttons is a skill everybody should know how to do, in my opinion. That is just... I mean, you don't need to sew star buttons on things, but you need to be able to stitch. 
some buttons on things, I think. Okay, this will be the last one. Let's see if we can get it in. There we go. Couldn't find the hole there for a sec. All right. So. I'm actually just going under the stitching on that looks too. holding it there so that it doesn't want to make a knot way over here. Loop around the finger, a wet finger, cross it and then roll it off and it just makes a lovely little knot pulling tight. See that? All right, where do we want this guy? I want him kind of over here, I feel like. Not too far away. I want to keep them together. And I definitely want to stitch down on this purple, so about like that, hey? So now let's see if this is going to go through this tiny little one. Ah, it will. Because these holes are small. Not as small as the ones on the hearts, though. Okay. I'm going to go through a few times, make sure it's really on there. Okay, where are we going to go? There we go. I think we'll do lots more. fabric over there, that will be the opposite of the look we're going for, which is to make a nice secure knot. I guess not the look, but the, the structure we need for our stitching. All right, so this part gets glued on. No, I didn't move myself too far away, did I? No. All right. So let's just put a little bit up here. Just a couple more. That's why we end on this one. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Where are you coming from? Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> I don't know if you signed up for all this stitching today, but it is what it is. That's where we're at. Sometimes the uh, the different skill sets that you use in crafting is like quite, quite broad. You know, we've done stamping on here. We've done, you know, like layering with the fabrics, almost collaging with the fabrics, you know, layering our little snippets together. And then, you know, some of them have different kinds of threads on them. This guy where I think I wanted it down here. This is a this is actually an antique button. It is a plastic button and it's clear, but it has this. I don't know if you can see it really good, but it has this etching right in to the top that's kind of in a square, which made me think of this plaid. So on here it goes. I just thought it would suit our plaid really well. 
and this one is also just two holes. So you can get buttons with four holes, uh, but the ones I ended up using were just the two hole ones. I did have a four hole one out and then I changed my mind on that one and put that uh, little chipboard crown on that one. So here we go. A little stitching. This one is very easy to stitch because there's only a few layers and the plaid just is easy to stitch on. It's so um, so soft and it's um, not woven as tight I don't think. But finding the buttonhole is apparently hard on a clear button. <laughs> don't ask me why that is. Oh, we don't need to be in our stitch. Okay. Who taught you guys how to how to sew or how to do your crafting skills? Do you find yourself thinking of them when you're doing some crafting? Especially stuff stuff like this, which doesn't require a huge amount of thought. I think it might not work. Oops. I can allow my thoughts to kind of float away and just think about her teaching me and think about how I'm teaching my kids some of these basic skills. I think everybody, like I said, everybody should know how to sew on a button at least. You know, lots of people don't have um, maybe the, I'm not going to say they don't have the skills for it, but they don't have the natural tendencies to, to do crafting and that's fine because we're all different, but there's basics. It's just like cooking to me, you know, there's people who are really good at it, really good at it and you know, God bless all good cooks, but everybody should know how to cook a few basic meals, including how to make a nice salad, I think, and a good dessert, you know, be able to do two or three of the, each of the different categories, make a good soup, make a good salad, make a good entree, you should be able to do two or three of those really well, and we have been working, my son is not particularly interested to be in the kitchen all that much, or he wasn't, and we started working with him about two years ago, and now he very consistently puts out really great meals out of the kitchen, which is awesome. I love cooking when I have the time to do it. I, I like making a nice job of it, and I get kind of frustrated when it's just something so quick. And so, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just hard on myself that way or whatever, but... I just, I don't know. Somebody had said that one of the great things about being single is that uh, you only have to cook for one. And I was thinking I couldn't think of more something more annoying. When I was by myself, I, I cooked the worst food. I was so busy with other stuff. All right. So this one's going to be a little trickier. I'm hoping that we can do a good job with this one. I love this color of thread. It's pretty. Um, the reason it's going to be a little trickier is because the flower has a hole in the center, the paper flower, um, but the button of course has the two holes, so I want to make sure that it's lined up so that the button looks like the flower center of the paper flower. So we'll see if we can manage something like that. So I definitely want this here, so let's start by poking up through there, okay, up and down, we'll see where that puts <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Maybe there, maybe there. Yeah, something like that. Like that, okay. So let's try putting that under there. I think I might have done this hard on myself. I should have just put the button down on one side first. But anyway, I was thinking I could be smart. I think I was too smart. Okay. I'm much 
too smart for myself sometimes. All right, well, I do like how that position turned out, so that's good. So now let's just try to find that hole again. That buttonhole does not want to be found. These are antique buttons, too, these pink ones. Some of these I got out of my mom's stash. Oh, goodness, come on. It's always fun using vintage or antique things. Um, they just have a different look, don't they? Some of the stuff that we have nowadays. And uh, I think you probably saw last time that I use baby food jars and, and I store all my little bits and bobs in there um, for attaching. I just, I found it so difficult um, to use all the things that I had. I mean, I went and I purchased a bunch and I collected a bunch and then I was like, okay, well, why is it that I never have what I want when I want it? You know, I think that's probably it. And uh, then I realized that I used things like a button or a brad or even um, an eyelet. I used them all at the same time in the crafting process. And so I decided I would put them all together by color, and that way, when I'm making a decision about what I'm putting on, I kind of can see all of the things that are in front of me, and then it makes it, like, there's, there is, that's my true selection for attachers, I mean, with the exception of my stapler and glue, these are what attach things. So it works pretty good. Oh, yeah. See that? That's cute. <laughs> awesome. And uh, by having them upside down like this, then I can just see see what's right in there, you know. And so I have them all separated out by by color. And I have this box here. So this is kind of like my finishing. This box is my finishing box right here. It has all my little bits and pieces. This was a, this was from my very first uh, home ec year, this button. So it's actually seen use because I wore, I created a nightshirt with that and I wore it and wore it and wore it until it fell apart. So my first year in home ec in grade nine Everything we made, I ended up using. It was really great. One of the things that I want to teach my kids how to do is just even um, how to make household things like uh, curtains or pillowcase. I think we'll start with the pillowcase because I mean, they don't need curtains for their room, but you can always use a personalized pillowcase, right? and uh, straight stitching and tying knots, all that good stuff. I think we're gonna get there eventually. That might be some of our February art projects. There we go. And so I decided to use yellow thread with this kind of teal button. Uh, because I wanted to pick up some of the different colors in here because this is, says grin, so I wanted to make it kind of goofy, right? I wanted to make it fun. But this one is really easy to see through because of the, the triangle pattern there. So that's really handy for stitching. So actually, I was really uh, fortunate in my choice here for my first clothing project. I did two pieces of clothing that year. I made the nightshirt, like I was saying, well, I guess I made an apron too. We all made aprons. And I made a dress. And I, oh my goodness, that dress. I picked fall colors. That's kind of the colors that look good on me. And I made this dress. I'm sure I have the pattern still because I came across some of my sewing patterns the other day. And I was like, oh, I'm going to use those in my junk journals. So I probably won't be making those patterns again because they're, you know, from the 90s or the and uh, anyway, so this dress is super long, long sleeved, uh, 
kind of a scoop neck and then um, uh, it was like it kind of went out almost in a, like a circle so like there was sewing on the bias there's all kinds of uh, sketchy things that I was going to be doing with this and my teacher wasn't at all sure I should do this pattern and don't you think you want to do something a little less complicated and I told her that I wanted to have something that I was going to use and uh, boy oh boy if I could you know let her know I wore that thing for church on Sundays. I wore that for maybe three years, maybe four. And then I put it in the bag of clothes that circled through my family. We're all, all sisters in my family. And so at a certain point, we were all kind of similar size. Um, that has changed. But um, anyway... Uh, then we are all very similar in size and so we would just put a bag of clothes that we were done with and we would just, you know, when we all got together at my mom's then everybody got a chance to peek in the bag and pick out things that they thought they'd like and so they tried on and, um, and then my sister, <laughs> Lorraine, she picked the dress out of there. She, and I mean the colors look great on her too. We're all very similar in coloring and uh, <laughs> so then she wore it for a number of years and then it went back in the bag but I honestly don't know what happened to that one after that but let's just say we we got our mileage out of that one no doubt all right this is the last one and so this one I'm going to put some brads on as you can see but I have this button I want to place first because it's harder to make it perfectly even with the with the button after so I'm just gonna so at first and then we can position the brads more equally on either side that's the plan anyway all right so let's just <laughs> I was doing so well with threading my needle and now it's giving me grief last one hey isn't that the way it goes I had lots and lots of favorite dresses over the years, though. I had this one dress, I don't know, it must have been, I don't know, somewhere between 7 and 10, I guess. And it was like lemon yellow. Oh, so this one is a four hole button, actually, just sidetracking here. So we sew this one a little differently. So it's kind of up, down on the one side. And then you kind of go across to the bottom, up, down, across at the top. And so you get these two little strips of threads going like this on the front. And then on the back, they go the opposite way. <clears throat> and so you do this for a little bit, and then you can make an X if you want. Or you can make an X from the beginning. But you get some different patterns depending on how you... Stitch it. Mmm. Oh, that frog is back. Let's grab another drink. Okay, so I'm leaving you hanging about the dress. Okay, so, you know, it's actually not unlike this shade here of yellow. It was very bright yellow. It was an Easter dress. My birthday is in spring, and so I get a kind of a dress at Easter time and then a Christmas dress. So I have a winter dress and a spring summery dress. And, um... And it had white polka dots on it with kind of a white collar. And uh, oh my goodness, I loved it so much. I, I remember wearing and wearing and wearing it. I just remember loving it. It's funny how we get attached to things when we're little. I mean, I have favorite clothes now, but I mean, I loved that dress like it was almost a person. <laughs> I had white patent leather shoes to go with it. So I had my white patent leather shoes for summer, spring and summer, and then black patent leather shoes for fall and winter. I was actually talking to my kids about shoe shining. It's not a lost art. Um, I don't know how many people shine their shoes themselves or, if, you know, like men go to shoe shines, I know. But uh, nothing like a nicely polished pair of shoes, is there? 
And I was trying to think of like teaching my kids how to shine shoes, but we actually do not have all of that many shoes in our house that require shining, which is kind of interesting. Why can I not get it in this last time? Gotta go in somewhere around there. There we go. All right. And uh, anyway, and I realized my husband has a pair of shoes, I think, that require shining. So we'll have a shoe shine lesson eventually on those shoes. Uh, maybe, maybe he wants to teach them about it. I don't know. But my dad taught me, and I thought that was kind of cool. And then I was the one who ended up shining shoes for a while because I liked it. I loved how, um, well, it's instant gratification, isn't it? You know, you go from a dull look on the shoe to highly polished and just, you know, under 10 minutes kind of thing by the time you do all the little steps. All right. So now I'm just going to put away my thread and my needle can go back and then needle look. So let's see how this turned out, shall we? Oh, it's cute. All right, and then I wanted these guys. Um, they're sequins layered with brads on each side. So I am gonna place those. And you may want to cover your ears or turn your volume down a little because I am gonna actually do my punch, which requires my hammer. I'm just using the tight, uh, the tightest or the smallest hole. And this is the Making Memories uh, craft tool kit. So it has different heads to, to put on here, but the smaller hole for the brads works really slick. So I'm going to put one guy here. Let's see if that went through. Yes, it did. And one guy over here. All right, we're done. You can turn back your volume. All right. It's just easier than trying to push through the fabric. It's much better. There we go. Th these particular brads I like a lot. They're very soft and it makes for uh, easy application they open up they just bend so well so and I always try to over bend brads and try to get them down as much as possible all right well that's what we we're gonna do today so let's just show you some of the ones that we were working on together look at how great these all turned out I mean I can see using these in a, a journal easily can't you these are gonna be lovely Wow, we really did go through a few, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, those are the ones we made together. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll just catch you in the next video. Take care, everyone.